Arizona becomes the first state in the union to require students to pass the U.S. citizenship exam if they want to graduate from high school. Man, I've just got to take my hat off to the entire state of Arizona. Under the new law, students must answer at least 60 out of 100 questions correctly. Questions such as, who wrote the Declaration of Independence? And why does the American flag have 13 stripes? 18 other states are now reviewing passage of similar legislation. I hope they do. I hope they all do. President Obama today doubling down on his threat. You notice how many times he doubles down on his threat to veto bipartisan legislation that would impose new sanctions against Iran. Congress needs to show patience. Um, so I, uh, with respect to the veto, uh, I said to my uh, Democratic caucus colleagues uh, yesterday that uh, I will veto a bill that comes to my desk. And so he says he will. The president's latest threat comes just a day after telling Senate Democrats he will play offense against the Republican-led Congress and Senate and press ahead with more executive actions. Joining us now, Forbes Media Chairman, Editor-in-Chief Steve Forbes. Steve, great to have you here. Good to be with you. Now we have a clear understanding. I mean, the president keeps doubling down. Congress keeps <laughs> passing uh, bills to repeal Obamacare. It, they're locked in some sort of spiral. I'm just not certain to what end. Well, first of all, doubling down the way he does, if he had a real opponent like you would say in a poker tournament, uh, he wouldn't have made the uh, first round. And in terms of the new Congress, they should see it as a huge opportunity. I think they will pass finally the Keystone Bill, but pass some of this good stuff, and then the president will be seen as the obstructor. And also pass a resolution or a bill on Gitmo. Why are they releasing people who we, many of whom, will become terrorists again yeah. against our own people? I, what? I, I mean, I don't I get it. I should not laugh when we were talking about terrorism, and I want to apologize for that. But there is a point at which we reach so far into the absurd that laughter is the only response. Uh, this is a president who held up Yemen as a model partner in the war against terror. Yemen, which has been the origin of so many terrorists who have been captured or killed, uh, uh, who have carried out attacks in Europe. Uh, this is beyond madness to continue this process. Well, you have ISIS carving out a new state in Iraq and Syria. You have uh, Boko Haram doing the same thing in northern Nigeria. And then the, the terrorists in Yemen are doing the same thing. Well, the, I've heard those terrorists are even mm -hmm. worse than uh, what we have with ISIS, if that's uh, believable. Yeah. So you got a bad yeah. bunch running, uh, bad bunches running three areas of the Middle East. Yeah, I Why heard... would we release terrorists to where the, these people came from. And, and I love the, the administration response, facetiously, I love that. Uh, talking about the recidiv recidivism rate, that is the return to the battlefield rate, is not as high as most people think. If I mean, this was one the bizarre. Return, well, do you know of any war, uh, unless it's part of a parole where you have a prisoner swap, mm -hmm. where you unilaterally release prisoners before the conflict is over? Did we do that in World War II? I don't think so. Uh, this president seems to be the great unilateralist. Uh, and what's striking about that is he, he campaigned, he bludgeoned George W. Bush in his campaign for being a unilateralist rather than a multilateralist, going it alone. Well, he's now he's those... a unilateralist and he's bragging about going it alone, whether it is, in, in the, whether it is against the Republican Congress, whatever it may be. Well, uh, oftentimes some of these people, when they criticize, they're actually describing themselves. And so obstructionist, unilateralist, this is the president of the United States. He's never learned to negotiate. When you're, when, when you're a community organizer, you're not negotiating. You're making demands. You're trying to stir things up. Well, and it does make us look a bit the fools for us uh, to all complain about his uh, incoherent strategy, his uh, utterly dysfunctional administration, his inability to, uh, to run the government. Uh, after all, we are the ones who put him in office uh, without experience, without vision, uh, and there we were. He had the great, of course, advantage of not being George W. Bush. Let me turn to trade. The Republican Party is suing the president for abuse of power and going beyond his executive power, while at the same time urging the president 
to accept trade promotion authority, fast track authority on trade, on trade, which is Article 1, Section 8, the constitutional responsibility of the Congress. Clear up this clear intellectual uh, contradiction on the part of the Republicans for me, if you can. Well, uh, the, the so-called trade promotion authority just means that if the, they come to an agreement, you have an up or down vote on it and you don't have amendments. That goes back for decades. Mm -hmm. The key thing is, how about enforcing... Well, actually, it goes so, back... It's only been so for five years now well, that they, we they, don't have it, and that's yeah. because everybody saw what was the result. Uh, and, and the reality is they say they don't trust the president on all of these issues, and suddenly they trust him to negotiate and for an up or down vote without their influence over its content, trade, which is a clear, clear departure, even though it's been done before by this Congress. Isn't it about time people took seriously, whether Republicans or Democrats, the Constitution of the United States, and conform thereto? What's, what did you just say? Constitution? What's that? Isn't that yeah. something in an antique well, store or something? <laughs> well, I hope that uh, it is uh, put out of but, the window and put to work. Well, one of the things even bigger than the trade authority, because that still involves a lot of negotiation, is what he's about to do with Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the Congress should go through those sanctions. And the thing about Iran is he's going to give it all away. There, he's going to make it possible for them to develop IC, interballistic continental missiles. He's also going to make it possible for them to uh, get right close to a, developing a nuclear weapon. And when they decide to do it, there's going to be no time to do anything about it. Yeah. And, so, and he gave it away on Cuba. I mean, that's why he never let this guy near a poker game, unless you wanted to get his money if he had some. Well, the great advantage he has, he is the House, and uh, the odds are still uh, with him uh, to this point. Not for the country, but for him. Uh, well, by the way, he was it's, again it's, it's, using it's, that first-person reference in almost everything uh, uh, today. It, it is. That, that's why when he gives uh, eulogies at funerals, it's all about him. I mean, <laughs> it's remarkable. But thankfully, this is a strong country. We will survive him, and we will come back just as we did in the 80s. You mentioned Ronald Reagan. I'm old enough to remember the Malays of the 70s. Uh, we overcame it and became a great nation again. I think we still have it within us. Well, I certainly, uh, I certainly agree with you. I believe that's the case. I think the damn shame is that we have to keep overcoming. Yes. Steve, <laughs> you, good to we, have you we, with us. We should have Steve learned Forbes. after Ronald Reagan. but uh, We should have learned... <laughs> <laughs> so much. <laughs> Steve Forbes, thanks. Thank for you. Here. Good to see you. And a look at our poll, the online poll results. We ask whether you can name a single policy decision made by President Obama since his reelection in 2012 that unequivocally advances the U.S. national interest. 97% of you said you could not. That's reassuring because certainly I could not. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. To whom did the president issue the strongest warning at today's news conference? Was it his warning to Iran or was it his warning to our Congress? Cast your vote at LouDobbs.com. Up next, why Americans are paying too high a price for the president's refusal to talk straight to the American people and indeed to the world.